The Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza says 150 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli strikes in the last day. The war against Hamas is putting more pressure on displaced people seeking refuge. Many have been forced into the southernmost part of the Gaza Strip, which the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says is of key importance. A 10-storey building is razed to the ground in an Israeli airstrike on Han Yunus. Attacks here have intensified in the last week of the year as Israel sets its sights on the south of the Gaza Strip. Rescue workers search for survivors of shelling elsewhere in the city. Israel's army has been pushing into Khan Yunus as it tries to eliminate Hamas, which is widely considered a terrorist organization. This video from the Israel Defense Forces claims to show operations against Hamas targets in Khan Yunus. Israel says it has stormed the headquarters of Hamas's intelligence wing in the city. Farther south on the border with Egypt, at least 100,000 displaced Palestinians have flooded into the desolate areas on the outskirts of Rafah in recent days. The whole of Gaza has been destroyed. People can't celebrate the new year. Our homes have been destroyed. I hope the war will end soon. I hope we can survive and live with dignity. I hope we can return to our homes, go back to school, return to everything that is familiar to us in the new year. Everyone around the world is celebrating the new year, watching fireworks displays. But for us, the fireworks are missiles. All we have is rockets and explosions. 2024 is likely to bring more suffering for many Gazans, with the UN warning that lack of supplies have left nearly half of them at risk of famine. Peace in Gaza remains a distant hope. Let's welcome Marina Moron from the War Studies Department of King's College London. Can Israel just retake control of the Gaza Strip border corridor with Egypt? Good afternoon. Well, Israel can militarily, it can retake the control indeed. Um, the repercussions of doing so uh, will, however, be very serious, specifically for the humanitarian situation. But yes, of course, you, you can uh, secure the border. It would de facto reverse the 2005 unilateral withdrawal from the border from, from Gaza. However, yes, it would make sense from a military point of view to be able to control that border where Israel believes a lot of weapons are being um, brought into Gaza. Wouldn't this be a feasible way, though, of saving civilians en masse, uh, possibly putting pressure on Egypt to allow Palestinians in. Uh, I know so many Arab countries don't want to see more Palestinians displaced, but these are people sitting in a very dangerous war zone. Well, absolutely. For Israel, it would be beneficial to get the civilians out and to have them stay in Egypt or elsewhere to get them away from the battlefield, which would reduce then collateral damage and civilian suffering. However, Egypt has not shown any willingness to accept civilians, and that is a problem. If Israel starts controlling the border and the civilians remain trapped inside Gaza, uh, preventing humanitarian aid, uh, which used to come from Egypt, entering Gaza, and that could uh, potentially escalate even more. And I guess Egypt wouldn't be all that keen on Israel setting up a military presence uh, decades after leaving that area. Well, absolutely, it could affect also um, broader Israeli relations with our Arab nations, including Egypt. Um, then, obviously, there is a problem of um, constant trafficking across that borders, and the, the, there are civilian refugees. So, yes, that would make uh, Israel even more unpopular than it is now. And wouldn't Israel first have to defeat Hamas to take control of the corridor? And uh, surely Israel isn't close to that with Netanyahu having said that the war will last many more months. Well, that is one of the step, step stones in order to destroy Hamas, because that way you could prevent movement out from Gaza. So the Hamas leaders that Israel believes to be in Khan Yunis, um, such as Yahweh Sinwar and Mohammed Daif, are 
uh, trapped in Gaza and have nowhere to go. And uh, so controlling that border would be vital to keep the Hamas militants trapped in order then to completely eradicate them. So that is a necessary evil from a military standpoint. Great analysis there from military analyst Marina Moron. Thank you very much for being on DW News. The U.S. military says it's killed 10 Yemeni Houthi rebels who attacked a merchant ship in the Red Sea. Navy helicopters responded to a distress call from the vessel and sank several Houthi boats as the rebels attempted to board. Shipping giant Mask says it has now suspended all shipping through the Red Sea. The Houthis have been attacking ships they say are linked to Israel. Research associate Asha Okabi from Harvard University joins us. It's been two weeks since the U.S. set up a task force to safeguard ships in the Red Sea, and the attacks continue. Yeah, the attacks continue because they're not driven by any strategic goal. They're not driven by any military goal, but rather merely intended by the Houthis as a propaganda. A propaganda war to portray themselves as heroes in the Middle East and focusing on external enemies rather than on their own humanitarian crisis, uh, their own ongoing corruption and despotic rule uh, within Yemen. Uh, there's a conflict, the humanitarian conflict within Yemen uh, that's holding hostage 29 million Yemenis for the past nine years. Uh, and clearly focusing on the external enemy within Israel is far easier for the Houthis to do than work on their own development within Yemen itself. So what is going to stop these attacks? Uh, the Houthis have moved themselves into uh, the Israel-Gaza uh, war, uh, not only because they see how popular it is in the street, the number of hundreds of thousands of Yemenis pouring out into the street in support of the Palestinians and against Israel, uh, but really the Houthis see this uh, as an opportunity to both burnish their own credentials uh, coming into the uh, conflict, uh, coming into the peace negotiations with Saudi Arabia, uh, but also to put themselves uh, behind the shield of Gaza. Uh, they realize very clearly that the international coalition that has been put together by the United States is limited specifically by the ability of other countries to join the war because joining the war against the Houthis would be supporting Israel. What about Iran? Is there something it can do? Uh, so the diplomatic efforts over the past nine years within Yemen, specifically related to uh, the Iranian-supported militias, the Houthis, uh, have only led to the Houthis' ability to rearm, uh, specifically after the 2016 diplomatic negotiations that led to a ceasefire in the western Yemeni port of Hodaida, allowed the Houthis to retake the port and gain uh, an incredible advantage in the Red Sea, both in terms of arms and militarization. And we see the ramifications of that Hodaida uh, ceasefire. So negotiations with Iran uh, won't necessarily lead towards any uh, further ceasefires. Uh, if anything, uh, this plays uh, the scenario as it's playing out in the Southern Red Sea, works very much into the Iranian larger mission within the Middle East to destabilize the various different countries uh, and to work together with the militias in the ground uh, in order to create perpetual chaos in the Middle East, which targets specifically the Gulf countries, uh, the Gulf oil countries. Middle East analyst Asha Okabe.